big hello to all the students and hope you all are keeping well in good health and are safe confined in your homes today we will begin the first chapter of biology chapter 5 the fundamental unit of life in your class 9 science and crt book you know what children what is so fascinating about the planet earth which makes it so different from other planets the very fact that it has life on it makes it the most beautiful planet and we being a part of this beautiful planet we being living organisms we should fundamentally know that what are we made up of right the fundamental unit of life is the cell this chapter you have already done in grade 8 and you are aware of the basics of this particular chapter so in class 9 we will be studying slightly in detail this is the introductory lecture so i will just go for brushing up of the contents and recapitulation of all those things which you have already done in class 8 regarding this chapter so let us begin this chapter we are learning in the branch of science which is called cytology the branch of science which deals with the study of cell and cell structure is called cytology various scientists have contributed a great deal in this field and with the advancements in the field of microscopy with the electron microscope coming into picture several structures within the cell have become evident and we got to know about them so let us see the contributions the very first contribution is of robert hook who discovered the cell by observing a thin slice of cork and found honeycomb like structures he called each compartment as a cell later on robert brown discovered the dense and prominent nucleus which is the highest coordinating center of the cell then comes the contribution of perkinji who discovered the protoplasm as the living substance of the cell and the benchmark in the field of cytology was the cell theory given by schleiden and schwann what does this theory state it states that all living organisms are made up of cells be it plant or an animal cell is only the structural and functional unit of life and all new cells come from pre-existing cells cell is the structural and functional unit of life very important statement children why structural and functional because any structure you see the tiniest unit forming that structural organization is the cell and every single cell has the ability to perform all the functions required for maintenance sustenance and for living hence it is called the structural and functional unit of life a few more basics organisms can either be unicellular or multicellular based on the number of cells that are present if the organism is just made up of one cell it is unicellular and if it is made up of many cells it is multicellular cells can be of different sizes and shapes to match with the function that they are performing cells forms tissues organs and organ systems leading to the formation of a structural organization and very important that all living organisms be it unicellular or multicellular will exhibit division of labor division of labor refers to distribution of work distribution of labor that is in a multicellular organisms we have several organs and organ systems performing various functions not interfering with the function of each other actually facilitating the smooth functioning of the body then comes types of cells based on their complexity whether it is a prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic cell you have learned in class 8 that a eukaryotic cell will have membrane bound organelles and will have a well defined nucleus as you can see in the picture whereas a prokaryotic cell will lack membrane bound organelles and will have a nucleus which is highly primitive lying like a diffused mass in the cytoplasm right so the basic difference between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell you can easily see in the picture we will again brush up the points in the powerpoint here 
Prokaryotic cells are primitive and possess an undefined nucleus called the nucleoid. They also lack membrane bound organelles like mitochondria, Golgi bodies etc. Whereas eukaryotic cells have a well defined nucleus and have membrane bound organelles. Examples are plant cells, animal cells etc. So for today this much introduction is enough and all of you know that be it a prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic cell the three basic components that is the cell membrane cytoplasm and nucleus is present in all in my next video i will begin with the details of the first component that is the cell membrane till then uh, take care of yourself and keep smiling